intentional goal setting and goal getting year round. Our exploration today is going to cover intentional goal setting and goal getting. And we're going to do that by covering these three key areas, goal setting basics, and then transitioning from goal setting to goal getting. And then we're going to cover some best practices for goal getting. Let's start with the question that I asked all of you. Do you write out intentional goals for yourself and for your business every year? And here were the possible answers. Yes, every year and I get close and or mostly achieve them. Yes, but I lose track of them throughout the year. Or no, but I'd like to start. And here are your answers. So 12% of you said yes every year and I achieve them, which is incredible. Actually, you'll see in a moment that's higher than the average goal setting statistic. 53% uh, of you said yes, but I lose track throughout the year. And 35% of you said no, but I'd like to start. And so I do usually, uh, you know, kind of consider B and C together because usually when we lose track of those goals, then, you know, we're really not continuing with the goals. So that's super normal. And also it's very common for people just not to be setting goals or have not been um aware or introduced to the goal setting and goal getting process. And so you see there that we have some impressive statistics compared to what the average statistic says about goals. So according to several goal setting statistics, you can see here that 84% of all people do not set any goals. So if you remembered our number a minute ago, that was close to that over 80%. 13% of people set say they set goals but do not achieve them, and only 3%, and this is by a study by hqr.com, only 3% of people set goals and achieve goals. And again, as I've been studying goals, and not only studying them, but actually creating a system for myself, what has intrigued me more than like the fact that these statistics seem a bit shocking for me, um, especially in an entrepreneur industry where I'm thinking, how are they able to build and continue in business without achieving their goals? But more importantly, I care about the why. Why? Why do people feel like they can't start their goals or why do they lose track of their goals, right? Or let's turn that around. Why are those 3% or our case, almost you know, over 10% of people actually setting their goals and achieving the goals? What makes the entire process and system different from the goal setter and the non-goal setter? Well, when I decided to go deeper into that concept, I said, well, there's got to be some basics around goal setting. And so let's go ahead and cover some goal setting basics. And when it comes to, you know, my linear and left <laughs> brain, I'll just go straight to the dictionary. All right. Well, what is the definition of a goal? What, what is a goal defined as? As the end and or target for which effort is directed to achieve a result. So it's so funny every time I go to the definitions because I'm like, okay, even reading that, I don't know if I'm not that excited about that. <laughs> the end or target. So I got to think forward thinking. I got to think about the future, which is already something that could be hard for people to think about the future. And then I got to put effort into it. Like, oh my gosh, you're already kind of making me feel like, okay, yes, I get it. I have to have an end goal and achieve it and have effort towards it. Maybe not as exciting when I read that definition. But what I realized for myself years ago is that we can reframe the language for ourselves. So when I started to look more into what others defined gold as, I saw this one. Something that one hopes or intends to accomplish with their efforts. And when I read that, it completely connected with me because I always have connected goals with my intentions. So I always intend to do something, but the outcome is not as important actually for me because as long as it was meaningful and I'm doing meaningful work, I truly believe that that goal will be achieved. So this, this definition really connected with me because it helped me bring in hope, 
It helped me bring in intention. And you know what else it helps us bring in? Humanity. It actually brings humanity into the picture of setting and getting goals. And that's why I believe that we should take the goal plus our intention and create intentional goals. And yes, you can do this. So I don't know if you were following the Olympics, but one of the very well-known Olympic winners would say, you can do this before she would go out there and actually perform. And they have videos of her doing her affirmation and saying, you can do this, you can do this. And again, that's part of the affirmation, the determination and the intentionality of your goal. Because when you start adding intentions to your goal setting process, guess what you're doing? You're finally adding yourself to the goal setting process, your dreams, your desires, your emotions. Yes, I like to be really honest. Goals are very emotional. We need to feel something about our goals. That's why the concept of starting with your why just went completely virtual and blew up globally because our why is what makes things that we do meaningful. It's meaningful. And that's why I love the concept of the intentional goal, because now the intentional goal focuses on us as human beings first. And then, of course, we need to move forward to the human doing, because we need to become goal getters and actually start doing what we need to do to achieve those goals. One of my favorite quotes that's really helped solidify this mindset shift that I needed to have, not only to be more mindful and consistent in setting goals, but also to really start talking about the concept of setting intentional goals. And that quote is by Zig Ziglar. He says, what you get by reaching your goals is not nearly so important as what you become by reaching them. When I first read this quote, and I've actually been following Diggle for decades, actually. I have his planners, I have his goal setting books, and I don't know why it took me so long to find this particular goal, uh, for this quote about goals, Um, but I feel like it was meant, the timing was perfect, because I was doing a lot of work about who I needed to become to actually start reaching these new upper level goals that I had. And so when I read this, I'm like, okay, Mariette, it's not so important that I reach that exact outcome or goal. What was more important is who I have become now, my next level self. So many people consider that concept of that next level you or that two point version, 2.0 version of you. That's what I feel like Zig Ziglar is telling us now. Focus on the being, not so much on the doing. So let's explore an intentional goal. And of course, we're going to have to define it. But now we're going to define it as we define it here at Master Your Books. (laughs) We call this the Master Your Books Goal Setters Definition, because of course, we've created and defined our own language here. Um, Of guess, incorporating the concept of the end and or target towards which intention an effort is desired to achieve a specific, meaningful result and or outcome. So now I'm like, okay, the end and or target towards which intention and effort is directed. I get that. I know that we need to have the end in mind. I love Steve Covey. I have following Stephen Covey for a long time. I get the end in mind concept. But if I am going to put all of this work and tears, and effort, and long hours, because yes, that's what it takes to be a true goal getter, then I want to make sure that I'm achieving something that's specific and meaningful, right? Meaningful, because the meaningful part of me eventually getting that result or outcome or achieving that goal means what? That I'm becoming that person that I want to become. So that's why the meaningful is super important when you're wanting to create those intentional goals. Okay, so we've covered the goal quite a bit now, and we've even evolved it into an intentional goal. 
But one important concept that we have to talk about before moving any further is, then what is goal setting? So how do we set that intentional goal? The way we set that intentional goal is to create a process and or full system by which we intentionally plan and achieve our goals. So even if we go out there and write this beautifully written intentional goal, and of course you can use those great concepts of calling it a SMART goal or calling it as my dear Robina, Mindset Money Coach, a SPARK goal. You can call it whatever you want, but then how are you going to achieve the goal? That is such a critical step. And that my friends is goal setting. So that's separate than just creating the goal. Now you have to create your you have to create your goal setting process, which again is the process and or system by which you're going to intentionally plan and achieve your goals. Okay. So let's explore intentional goal setting. Another quote, and you're going to see I love quotes. I love to bring in my friends. And, you know, I'm, I'm not necessarily saying James and Clear, James Clear and our buddies, but honestly, when anyone, whether it's an author or a podcaster or a leader or a thought leader, says something that just connects with me, I end up calling them my friend. So just so you know, I want to be very honest. You're like, well, does she know James Clear? I don't know James Clear yet, but I may put him on my list of people that I need to know. Um, so one of my favorite quotes that has helped me now understand and explain goal setting, so now we're transitioning to goal setting, is James Clear. He has an amazing book called Atomic Habits. And in his book, he said this, Goals are for people who care about winning once. Systems are for people who care about winning repeatedly. When I, again, not only did I read that quote in the book, after that, I got so obsessed with James Clear, just so you know. So I've listened to tons of his podcasts. And he says that quote a lot on the podcast. And at first, when I heard that quote, I almost got a little offended. I was like, wait a second. I thought I was a goal getter all these years. I thought I was this goals person and I set goals and I achieved my goals. And, but when he said goals are for people who care about winning once, I understood. He said, you can't just create the goal. You have to create the system around the goal. That's how you can win repeatedly. And like the light bulb turned on for me. I'm like, oh my goodness, that is like a fundamental truth for everyone, not only business owners, but for everyone, our youth, all our multi-generations. Like we need to not only think about the goals and set the goals, we need to create the repeatable, simple, consistent systems for our goals. And that was such a huge breakthrough for me. So let's go ahead and put this all together. Intentional goal setting is the act of intentionally selecting a target or you know end result for a meaningful result so that we want that the end game, the target, and we're doing this for a meaningful result. Again, the meaningful result is that way we're focusing on us. We're focusing on who we're going to become, our why. Why is this important to us? Then we're going to create a process to achieve that result. Okay, that's, that's fundamental truth number one. Do we have a repeatable process that feels lighter to us, that feels easier to us to achieve that result and outcome? So one example of that for me, as I just shared a moment ago, is that for me, my process is a 12-week process. My process is a quarterly process. Even though I love to debrief and I love to have my annual sessions with Danny and with my Clarity sisters, um, those are my women in my group that we kind of look at our whole year and we talk about what are we going to do next year. Those are really important processes, but the ones that help me take massive action are the smaller processes, like my 12-week debriefs and my 12-week plannings. And then lastly, after we've intentionally selected a target, created that system and process, then we need to learn and implement the habits and or behaviors. So these are the things we're doing, right? Also known as the daily micro tasks. So we can continue to support our entire system 
and progress towards our goals, right? So it's not only that we set this masterful and meaningful goal, it's not only that we've created this beautiful plan of the process and systems we're going to use to support our goals, then my friends, we actually need to do those tasks. We need to do, we need to implement those tactics that we have shared with ourselves in our plan that are gonna help us continuously move forward towards our goals. So three key areas in the intentional goal setting process. And what I've learned is this third one is essential because as we start implementing these habits and behaviors, they do become lighter. They do become part of our everyday life. I love when John Maxwell is asked, if you've ever followed John Maxwell and they ask, what do you do every day? He does the same things every day. He reads, he journal, he writes, and he, I think it was like two other things, but he does the same five things every day. And so there's this really funny video out there. You can find him. It's a John, Mal, a John uh, Maxwell video of what you do every day. And someone keeps on asking him, so then what do you do every day? And let's just assume it's three things. I read, I journal, I pray. And then he goes, so then what do you do on Sundays? I read, I journal, and I pray. So what do you do on Christmas? He's like, please, I read, I journal, and I pray. Like, I just told you I do it every day. And I, I, I so resonate with that concept, even though it makes me giggle, because I do several things every day. And until I really was aware of it, I didn't realize that I did like three or four things every single day. Those are those habits and behaviors that we already maybe have. So let's become aware of them or they're the ones that we can learn. They're the ones that we can implement into our daily lives. So let's just do a quick visual of this as well. Intentional goal setting intentionally selecting a target. So again, let's visually see that target, that big goal. That's the one everybody talks about, right? It's the one that sometimes creates resistance for people. Like, oh, that feels so big. We're going to go ahead and talk about why it's not so big. Um, so that target, okay? Then create the process. So we need to, yes, we need to now move, even though we are talking a lot and filling into our right brain, into our heart with the meaning and the intentionality. We also need to pull in our left brain, and we need to pull in our logical skills, our technical skills, because we do have to create a process for that, a process to achieve our goal. But more importantly, my friends, we need to learn and implement and become aware of those micro tasks, those habits, those behaviors that are going to support our goals. What are we actually going to do? That's why when people ask me, okay, so then, you know, we go through this whole goal setting process and then I ask ask them at the end. So what are three things you're going to do? Like when you go to a presentation at the end of this workshop, I'll ask you, what are your three takeaways? What are you actually going to work, you know, take from this session? What are you going to work on? What happens with that question? We get stuck, right? Like, oh no, now they're asking me to put effort into this. Yes, my friends, we need to put effort into this, but they could be micro tasks micro habits, micro behaviors. And that's the whole concept of atomic habits is that it's this concept of really batching your habits or stacking your habits over time so they don't feel so heavy anymore. They just feel like part of what? Part of who you're becoming. They're part of who you are becoming. So let's explore some goal setting in action. Let's talk about the runner system. The runner system. So this is a runner and her goal is to train for and complete a 10K race in under 60 minutes on October 31st, whatever year this is, okay? Very defined, very smart, very specific goal. Now her process that she's creating, because this is a whole system, right? The system is the goal, the process, and then the actual tactic, the, the micro tasks. So her process is I'm going to start including in my, you know, in this system, I want to create a schedule. I want to feel like I have a training schedule. When am I going to run during the week? I'm going to create a program. So maybe she's going to go online and figure out what is a really good running program, which includes diet plans, which includes, you know, different types of exercises and different types of practices around being able to get to a point where you can run a 10K race in under 60 minutes. So that's all going to be part of her overall process, all her steps 
all her mini projects that are going to be part of this system. So now we're like, okay, so let's just take the program you're going to create. You're going to create a program. Well, what's going to be part of the program? Well, she needs to now turn that into habits or micro tasks. So she's going to say, well, in my program, I'm going to say every day I have to set up all my running gear. I have to go investigate what's the best running gear. Maybe right now, since I just started, I'm just going to use the shoes I have, but I'm just going to make sure that every day in my schedule, you know, I am going to run every, you know, every other day and I am going to make sure I'm set up every night. So the first thing I do when I look over to the left out of bed is that's where all my running gear is, right? Also, when it comes to her schedule and her program, she needs to do some research about herself as well. So when is the best time for her to run? When are her energy levels elevated by the running? Or maybe when does she have low energy level and she's like, actually, that's when I have to go out and run. When I'm feeling really low, I go out and run and I get those endorphins and I'm able to come back. And that's a really good time for me. So what does that look like? Again, that's part of the process of her building out those habits. She can do something as simple as, you know, what's part of my program as well, because I did some research and I and I realized that runners that get to a point where they can run this, this longer length of time, that's kind of more of a um of a, a long-term running or um a long form running. And so I need to stretch more because lately I've just been getting up and going running. I need to stretch. I need to create a habit to walk the first three minutes because I just want to get up and run. Again, I am not a runner, so y'all know. So I'm just kind of, you know, thinking that these could be things that people could think about in regards to their habits. And then of course, this is for anyone, including myself, that I'm constantly trying to do better with my health, drink eight glasses of water daily. So this could be part of the habits, the tasks that she's putting into what? Into her process, because her process is going to do what? Going to support her goal. So now let's go through these next examples a little faster. We have a writer. And the writer's goal is to write the first draft of her first book by December 31st, XX, whatever year that is, okay? Her process that she came up with is I'm going to create a writing schedule because I'm not always inspired to write. <laughs> so I need to know when I'm most inspired to write and I need to create that ambiance and that environment and just be ready to write. I'm going to join a writing program maybe hire a coach or get into some kind of writing club or accountability club. And I, I do like to have my writing tools. Let's just say she's kind of a geek like me. And she's like, I do care about my pens and I care about my pads and I care about my, I don't even know if people have typewriters anymore, but you know, the type of computer that I write, I, I do care about the keyboard because I want my fingers to just flow on the keyboard. So that's important to her, right? That's awesome that she's really thought her process through. So now, what are going to be those habits she's going to start learning, implementing, or even becoming aware of that she has already? Well, she said she needed to create a space needed to get inspired, and she realized she has a place already. She actually goes to a place on the weekend sometimes when she's able to get some time alone, and every time she goes there, she's inspired to write. So she's like, I need to go to my special space and write. like that. I got to put that on what? My schedule. So now she's going to create her writing schedule and in her schedule, it's going to be when she feels like her, you know, energy levels are best to write. Where does she want to write? What time does she want to write? And this writer uh, just so happens to be a mom. So she probably needs to write when there's not a lot of noise, when her kids are maybe in school, or maybe she needs to just take off a whole weekend and do a writer's retreat. Again, she needs to make that as part of her process first. And then when it comes to, let's say, her every quarter, she takes a writer's treat for one weekend. She needs to create a habit of that because then everybody in the family knows, oh, guess what? Mom leaves, you know, the third week of March to her writer's retreat. Yep, that's what she does. That's part of her process. And so these are just a few other examples. And then the last one, again, that always connects with my community is the entrepreneur system. So this is a huge system, right? And I say huge because there's so many things that are part of the system. I'm going to give you one simple example. So she uh, just opened up her shop and her goal is to start her start her business. So she just started and she wants to earn $80,000 in 12 to 14 months. So now she's saying, okay, like this is around what I want to earn and around this time. Again, she's just starting. She's just learning. But she is pretty definitive still on her goal, which is really good. 
So she did a little research already and she's like, well, I already know based on my research, I have to have a sales system and a marketing system. I have to get my operations together and I really need to have a defined business model. I need to know how I'm actually selling, what, what tools am I using? I have a shop. So do I only have one shop website? Do I have other ways to bring in income? She's really figuring out what that business model is going to look like. Why? Because all of this is going to help her reach a very defined $80,000 goal. So there's times when even in your systems, you can make sure or you can do your best, let's say, to have it support that number, that quantitative or qualitative goal. Because in this case, this young entrepreneur left her job. So she's like, I do really need to bring in 80,000 within the next 12 to 14 months because that's actually what I was living off of. And right now my goal is to replace my income. So then her systems are going to really be in support of that as well, especially when it comes to prioritizing what she's going to do first. So let's look at just a few examples. So again, she's already realized that if she really wants to work on building her business and learning the stuff, she needs to give herself some time to develop and learn. So she's going to invest about three to six hours a week on that. For now, she may need to invest more. She scheduled out already half a day every week. So at the end of Friday, she ends her day at noon and the rest of Friday and maybe sometimes on the weekends, to be honest, she is working on her business. She's working on all the things that she needs to do. She's also thinking about creating what kind of schedule she wants because she wants to make sure that she is um, taking into consideration her lifestyle, her capacity, and um, she really wants to choose what are those tools so she can create a plan because she does want to follow a plan. And so she is looking at what tools that she can use to create a plan and then constantly assign tasks to herself because she doesn't want to drop the ball. So those are all the habits that she's creating to do what? To support the system that she has for her entrepreneurial goal. So I'm jumping on here because two things. First, we're going to do a little bit of work together. But before we do, I always like to make sure that we're all on the same page. And I want to do, again, my pause for checking in on questions. So before we get to work, does anyone, well, what anyone want to share maybe something that came through with them while we were talking about this concept of not only intentional goals, but intentional goal setting and the system that supports it? And also, do you have any questions specifically around the three parts, which is you got your very specific SMART goal, which we'll cover more about SMART goals in a minute. And then we have the actual process. So what is going to help us support the goal? And then we have those daily or weekly or even monthly processes or steps could be like, you know, for instance, let's say financial, looking at your financials. You may not do that every day, but that could be a task you do on a weekly basis or a biweekly basis. So those are the actual habits, tasks, and behaviors you are doing to support your system and support your goal. So when it comes to goal getting, what has helped me is to implement and practice what I call different clarity practices to go get and focus on my goal. And so not only have I practiced these on my own, but I've also learned how others uh, have practiced these um, these goal getting kind of techniques. And then as always, as I'm sure you can tell, I like to tweak it for what works for me and and what I feel is just an easier way to share it with my community. So the four goal, the three, excuse me, the three goal uh, getting clarity practices I want to share are alignment checkup, goal categories, and the smarter goal, and then transitioning into the intentional goal. So I already kind of introduced you to intentional goal, but now I'm going to show you how I do use the smart goal technique. So I'm sure many of you know about the SMART goal technique, but then I turn it into a SMARTER goal, and then eventually I put it into the full intentional goal setting process. So let's go ahead and look at that. So let's first explore the alignment checkup. So the alignment checkup can be done annually, quarterly, or I always say as a debrief after every big project that you do. So this is your uh, this is your opportunity and appointment with yourself if you're a solo practitioner or hopefully with an accountability partner or with your team member and basically you connect together and you ask these five reflective questions. Number 1, 
And by the way, you can choose your own questions. These have just been the ones that have really helped me. First one is, what was the biggest lesson? And what I'm showing you right now, I'm actually showing you an example of how I use the application Notion. So Notion is the application where I do a lot of my writing and my productivity and my organizing. And so I pull up my Notion page um, and I basically have a page for each quarter or each project. And I ask myself these questions. What was your biggest lesson from this project, let's say? What is something you're really proud of and want to celebrate? So if I did put some effort into a goal, into completing something and creating something, my friends, let's start with celebration. Let's give ourselves some kudos, right? Let's just be like, what am I really proud of? Like, I actually was able to do this. Maybe it didn't turn out perfectly, which most of the time it won't, right? But what can I celebrate about this experience? The next thing I ask is what is something that I would like to do differently? So now I really want to debrief and think about what went right, what went wrong, what can be improved. And based on those type of um, concepts around like really debriefing on something, then you can ask yourself the question, well, what can I do differently next time then? Based on what went right or based on what went wrong, how could I change that? And by the way, based on what worked and what didn't work, there's also the question of, do I even want to keep doing this, right? So if you had a goal or if you had a result or outcome that you were working towards, and at the end of the day, it's just not something you want to continue working on, you can ask yourself all these questions. And at the very end, you can ask yourself a very important question, which is, if this didn't really work very well, if I don't have a lot of celebrations, if I if it didn't really excite me as much as I thought it did, maybe a new business model you implemented in your business and you're like, I actually don't like doing that, then be open to learn from that experience and accept that learning and just release it, right? Don't, don't be such a downer. Don't beat yourself up. You don't have to continue doing things again or doing things in ways that don't feel right just be open to state it out, this work that didn't work, and then release it. It's my favorite part of this process is to just release it and say, guess what? I'm going to do that service, but I'm not going to do that part of the service anymore. That didn't work for me. I don't like it, right? And that's okay to do that. Um, and I have a video online on YouTube, which is called the five questions to light you up. And that's when I actually talk about this concept of the... Um, reflective questions. The next thing I like to do is I like to put my goals into goal categories. And so goal categories, again, can be done annually or quarterly, any anytime you want. The concept is to prioritize what kind of goal is it. So assign your category to a specific part of your life. So here is a very simple example. Say you, had, you, have, you, you went through this goal setting process and you have three or four goals. Well, where does this fit in your life? Is it a relationship goal? Is it a business goal? Is it a health goal, a well-being goal, a wealth goal? And so many times when we were going back to the process, so the systems that are going to support the goal and the daily behavior that you're going to implement or become aware of, then you need to know that that goes, you know, that type of goal has different types of systems, has different types of daily actions. So you can't just say, oh, all of my goals are the same. Absolutely not. Your goals have a category. And based on that category, you're going to have to build a different system for it with different daily habits for it. Also, what's beautiful of creating goal categories is that many times when you do that, you can say, wow, I created a relationship goal, a business goal, and a health goal. But guess what? I need to focus on my relationship goal. That's literally where my next 12 weeks or my next quarter or my next six months have to go. And guess what? That's okay. It doesn't mean the other goals are not as important. It just means that you got clarity, that you gain clarity on where you're going to focus your time and energy most, which is your primary resource in life is your own time and energy. And if you believe that when you went and set these goals, if the relationship goal was the most important, meaningful one, then that's the one you're going to focus building the system for and building the habits for. So that's the power of putting it in categories.
And the last one I want to share is exploring the smarter goal and then turning it into an intentional goal. Now, this is going to bring back the concept that we've been talking about this entire time, but we're going to add a concept to it. So the SMART goal, which I'm sure most of you have heard about before, it's the very, very well-known uh, uh, concept of goal setting. And when you create a goal, what do you do? You create it SMART. You want it to be specific. You want it to be measurable, and this is important when it comes to measurable, and you're tracking that progress of that goal. It can be quantitative, so it can have numbers or percentages or some type of quantitative measure that you can count, but it also could be qualitative as well, meaning how is it improving the quality of your business? How is it improving the quality of your life? How is it improving and enhancing the quality of life of others? So that's qualitative. You want it to be attainable, which means let's make sure it's realistic. And that's why I tell you that I like to break down my goals in 12 weeks. Because for me, for me to truly attain a goal, it needs to be shorter term. It needs to be relevant to our life. So you can you can replace relevant with intentional, right? So it needs to be intentional and relevant to why we're even doing what we're doing every day. And there should be a business mission alignment. So if we're talking about entrepreneurial goals, does it align with your values, your vision, and your mission? Very important. And then lastly, we want to put the time, right? And I always say time bound for me is not a deadline. I don't like that. First of all, I don't like the word dead anyway. So I always say it could use due date or because I kind of think about like delivery, like when you're going to deliver a baby. And I always like delivery date. Like when am I going to deliver this beautiful thing to my client? When am I going to deliver this beautiful goal to somebody else? And so I love the concept of time bound being a due date or delivery date. But how do we make it smarter? The way we make it smarter is that we add the E and the R, of course, smarter. So the E helps us evaluate the goal to check if it still makes sense. So that brings you to those reflective questions again. The evaluation are the questions that you ask yourself about the goal. It's the debriefing of the goal. That's the evaluation part. And the R, my friends, please don't forget the R. And you can't because you would misspell it. So make sure you add smarter because it's the rewarding of yourself. Reward yourself. Get excited about all of your wins, all of your progress. And that's the R. So how do we go from a smarter goal, right? A smarter goal to an intentional goal. And the way you do that is in eight simple steps. So if you'd like, you can feel free to um, bring out the exercise. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually write out a smarter goal together. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to do this probably a little bit faster because I want to be mindful of your time. But let's go ahead and write out a smarter, intentional goal together. And so again, don't feel any pressure on this. We're going to do it together. We're going to do it a little quickly, but I want you to feel into it. And if you don't have the paper, you can just write it down if you'd like, or you can just watch. So writing out your goal into eight intentional steps. Steps one through four, okay? And you all should have this as well in front of you. So the idea here, and again, all of this should now be a refresher because we've ever covered this concept. So you're going to write your goal in the system that will support this goal. By the way, if you all did the first exercise, you already did step one. <laughs> so you're going to write your goal in the system that will support this goal. Step two, and this is where I believe, this is something I've done, by the way. I, I, I shared the intentional goal setting system, but this is a practice that I do. This is a specific practice I do for all of my key goals that I want to commit to, Okay and hopefully achieve. But all I'm doing when I'm doing this practice is committing to it. So this is like my in my goal commitment statement. So step two, why is this goal important for you to focus on? So why am I even focusing on this? Why am I putting the energy on it? And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna read it like this so y'all can kind of see it with me. So the first one is write your goal in the system that will support this goal. The second one is, why is this goal important to focus your time and energy on, okay? And so something can come up for you, and we're gonna do this quickly, just so I'm just gonna give you a few seconds for each, but why? 
You know, let's say in, in, in Nadia's case, it's like, because I know people, you know, I've seen people that are asking for this. Maybe they, you know, they're not correctly providing these services and I want to help them. I want to take away any shame of them not knowing this information. I want to provide it in a way where they're excited to provide this service. So not only will it help the business owner getting the service done the right way, but it's going to have help the tax professional because now they can include a new income stream into their business that they're confident about offering. So that's a big why, right? Another why could just be because I want to get this power that I have in my head, these 20 years of learning out of my head and out to the world. Many times that's just my why, everyone. I don't know if that's good enough, but I'm just like, I don't want to keep all this knowledge anymore. Like I'm on a part in my life that I live more, I, I expand more when I give to others. So I want to give you knowledge and then I want to hear what you do with it. Like that's many times just what my why is. That's why I create something new because I want to give it out. Step three, key actions you will take to support and achieve this goal. Again, you've already worked on that already, right? So that's the concept here. This is just another practice to write things out. So now what are those actions? What are those micro tasks? What are those habits? What are those behaviors you're going to now implement in your life to take action on the goal, right? Because it's an action-based process. This is not about just writing the goal. Remember, we said that's not that's not good enough. And it's not even good enough to just say why it's important and here's what I think I'm going to do. No, what are you actually going to do? And I heard this from some of you already. I believe it was Anna. Step four, who's going to help you? My friends. We have to remember there's no reason for us to be on this entrepreneurial journey or this book journey or this creator journey or whatever journey you're on uh, to, to create that intentional goal and achieve it. You don't need to be on it by yourself. So who is going to help you? There's a really good book out there, and it's actually called Not How, But Who. And I love it because the concept is we're always focused on how we're going to do it. But what about who can help me? Because maybe someone's already doing it and they can just give me the Cliff Notes version, right? They can give me the accelerated version of what I'm doing. Nadia is a great example of that because her and I were just an experience where I got to teach her something that I've already done. So it's like, why not let me take my brain out and give it to you and tell you all the mistakes I've made? Like, let me just help you, right? So let's be open to asking not how, but who, okay? Those are our peoples and our partners. Step five, we've already talked about that. Our goals need to have a metric that we can check progress and performance. Check progress and performance, but it can be qualitative, improving our quality of life and of others, or everybody uh, usually goes to the quantitative, right? The numbers, right? So, but it can be either or, or both, okay? Step six, start date and completion date. So I already heard some completion dates, right? Start date could be today, right? And it's okay if start date's next week, because guess what? If you're like, I'm so excited about this, Marriott, but to be honest, when you showed me the categories of goals, I already have another category that's really important to me right now. Could be family, could be health, could be wealth, whatever it is. So you keep on focusing on that category, but then go ahead and create that other goal that's meaningful and give it a start date. Okay, give it a start date and give it a completion date. And when I say completion, it's your intention of completing it then. You could always move a completion date here and there. I do it all the time, okay? But when do you intend to have it by or done by or delivered by, okay? Step seven, and my one of my favorites. Now we're getting to my favorite part of the intentional goal practice is with who are you going to celebrate? Woo! Okay, like put it on there. My husband, my wife, my spouse, my partner, my bestie, you know, or how are you going to celebrate it? For me, it's go get like a super yummy latte and, you know, and just kind of hang out by myself and sneak away for a few hours. Like that is my celebration. You know, I'd love to do it with someone else, but if I can't, I need to do that for myself, right? So how are we going to celebrate these goals or, a, you know, the intention of doing it and then whatever happened at the end of that delivery date? And the last concept that I love to share here in the intentional goal setting practice right? Because this is the whole practice now. We did the system and this is a practice that I use whenever I'm like, Mariette, you're going to do this goal. Okay, put it on your intentional goal sheet then because this is my way of kind of seeing it all. And then from here, it actually moves on to an intentional, into a, a full intentional like 
planner, spreadsheet. Yeah, that's what I nerd out on that side, right? But this is like, when it gets to this sheet, that means I'm very, very serious about it, right? This is, this is meaningful to me. So step eight is what is really important that I want to leave you with in regards to this practice, which is we're all growing here. Okay, we're all growing. We need to take away again the, the the uneasiness and the heaviness of goals. And to do that, what I've learned, and actually I learned this from one of my mentors, is that she was because I was telling him, like, oh gosh, but I I, I want to say that number, but I don't really want to say that number because now it sounds kind of like but not is too big. And she's like, Well, then have a good, better, and best. So in the example of our entrepreneur, maybe good annual income for next year after she's worked her 12 to 16 months, if she's reached 50 grand, it's pretty good. She'd rather reach the 80 to replace her income. But guess what? If she made, if she is bringing in $50,000 worth of annual revenue in 12 months, that's good. She'll figure out how to bring in the others or she'll see what she has to do, but she, she wants to feel good about it. So now she's like, okay, I'm going to say $50,000 is good. $60,000 is better, right? And best would be $80,000. If I can completely replace my old job's income, I mean, that was my whole goal of leaving, right? Then that is the best case scenario. But I don't want to feel bummed in 12 months, right? I don't want to feel, you know, defeated in 12 months. So give me a little chance, a little cushion, right? Give me a little, a little cushion to say, this would be good. This would be much better. And this is best case scenario, right? So I love that concept of doing that because it does take a lot of pressure off of the goal setting process. Let's go ahead and just share my ultimate favorite goal about goals again. So what you get by reaching your goals is not nearly so important as what you become by reaching them. And honestly, everyone, the fact that you just spent this afternoon, morning, afternoon, evening with us is your intention and believe in yourself that you are not just here to create these goals. It's to become that goal setter and goal getter. So I just want to thank you so much for being here. It's an honor to have you all here. And I hope to see you in another experience soon, everyone. Thank you. Bye for now.